Hello, fabulous cloud community, and welcome to Las Vegas. We are theCUBE, and we will be broadcasting live from the AWS reInvent show floor for the next four days. This is our first opening segment. I am joined by the infamous John Furrier. John, it is your 10th year being here at reInvent. How does it feel? It's been a great to see you. It feels great. I mean, just getting ready for the next four days. It's, this is the marathon of all tech shows. It's, uh, it's busy, it's crowded, it's loud and the content and the people here are really kind of changing the game and the stories are always plentiful and deep and just, it's, it really is one of those shows you kind of get intoxicated on the show floor and in the event and after hours. People <laughs> are partying. I mean, it is like the big show and 10 years been an amazing run. People are getting bigger. Um, you're seeing the changing ecosystem, next gen cloud. And you got the classic AWS, AWS Classic still kind of doing its thing. So you get a lot of data, a lot of data stories, and our guests here are going to talk more about that. This is the year the cloud kind of goes next gen. And you start to see the success gen one cloud players um, go on the next level. It's going to be a really fun, fun week. Yes, I'm absolutely thrilled. And you can certainly feel the excitement. The show floor doors just opened, people pouring in. The drinks are getting stacked behind us. As you mentioned, it is going to be a marathon and very exciting. On that note, fantastic interview to kick us off here. We're starting the day with Stripe. Please welcome Noor and Brian. How are you both doing today? Excited to be here? Really happy to be here. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, definitely excited to be here. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you know, you were mentioning you could feel the temperature and the energy <laughs> in here. It is hot. It's a hot show. <laughs> we're a hot crew. Let's just be honest about that. No shame in that. No shame in that game. But I want to I want to open us up. You know, Stripe serving two million customers according to the internet, AWS with one million customers of their own, both leading companies in your industries. What, just in case there's someone in the audience who hasn't heard of Stripe, what is Stripe and how can companies use it along with AWS? Nor, why don't you start us off? Yeah, so Stripe started back in 2010, originally as a payments company that helped businesses accept and process their payments online. Um, so that was something that traditionally had been really tedious, kind of difficult for um, web developers to set up. And what Stripe did was actually introduce a couple of lines of code that um, developers could really easily integrate into their websites and start accepting those payments online. So payments is super core to who Stripe is as a company. It's something that we still focus on a lot today, but um, we actually like to think of ourselves now as more than just a payments company, but rather financial infrastructure for the internet. And that's just because we have expanded into so many different tools and technologies that are beyond payments and actually help businesses with just about anything that they might need to do when it comes to the finances of running an online company. So what I mean by that, a couple examples being um, setting up online marketplaces to accept multi-party payments, um, running subscriptions and recurring payments, uh, collecting sales tax accurately and compliantly, uh, revenue recognition, and data and analytics, importantly, on all of those things, which is what Brian and I focus on at Stripe. So yeah, since, since 2010, Stripe's really grown to serve millions of customers, as you said, uh, from your small startups to your large multinational companies, be able to not only run their payments, but also run complex financial operations online. Interesting, even the Cube's a customer of Stripe, it's so easy to integrate. You guys got your roots there, but now Casual as you guys up. got bigger, I mean, you guys have massive traction and people are doing more. You guys are going to talk here on the data pipeline in front of you, the engineering manager. Mm -hmm. What has it grown to? I and mean, what are some of the challenges and opportunities your customers are facing as they look at that data pipeline that you guys are talking about here at reInvent? Yeah, so Stripe Data Pipeline really helps our customers get their data out of Stripe and into you know, their data warehouse, into Amazon Redshift. And that has been something that for our customers is super important. They have a lot of other data sets that they want to join our Stripe data with to kind of get to more complex, more enriched insights. And Stripe Data Pipeline is just a really seamless way to do that. It lets you, without any engineering, without any coding, with pretty minimal setup, just connect your Stripe account to your Amazon Redshift data warehouse. Really secure, it's encrypted, you know, it's scalable, it's going to meet all of the needs of kind of a big enterprise. Um, and it gets you all of your Stripe data. So anything in our API, a lot of our reports are just like there for you to take. 
And this just overcomes a big hurdle. I mean, this is something that would take, you know, multiple engineers, months to build if you wanted to do this in-house. Yeah. We give it to you, you know, with a couple clicks. So it's kind of a, a step change for getting data out of Stripe into your data warehouse. Yeah, and the topic of this chat is getting more data out of your data from Stripe with the pipelining. This is kind of an interesting point. I want to get your thoughts. You guys are in the, in the front lines with customers. You know, Stripe started out with their roots, line of code, get up and running, payment gateway, whatever you want to call it. Developers just want to get cash on the door. Thank you very much. Now you're kind of turning in, growing up, and continuing to grow. Are you guys like a financial cloud? I mean, would you categorize yourself as a, because you're on top of AWS. Yeah, financial infrastructure a, of the internet was, yeah, like, a, was a claim I definitely want to touch on from yeah, your earlier today. I mean, it was powerful. You guys are a super financial cloud, basically. Yeah, <laughs> super cloud. basically, Always so the way that AWS um, kind of is the superstar in cloud computing, that's how we feel at Stripe, that we want to um, put forth as financial infrastructure for the internet. So yeah, a lot of similarities actually. It's funny, we're, we're really glad to be at AWS. Um, I think this is the first time that we've participated in a conference like this, but um, just to be able to participate and um, you know, be around AWS where we have a lot of synergies both as companies, Stripe is a customer of AWS and um, you know, for AWS users they can easily process payments through Stripe. So a lot of synergies there and um, yeah, at a company level as well, we find ourselves really aligned with AWS in terms of the goals that we have for our users, helping them scale, expand globally, all of those good things. Let's dig in there a little bit more. Sounds like a wonderful collaboration. We love to hear of technology partnerships like that. Brian, talk to us a little bit about the challenges that the data pipeline solves from Stripe for Redshift users. Yeah, for sure. So Stripe Data Pipeline uses Amazon Redshift's built-in data sharing capabilities, which gives you kind of an instant view into your Stripe data. If you weren't using Stripe Data Pipeline, you would have to you know, ingest this data out of our API, kind of pull it yourself manually. Um, and yeah, I think that's just like a big part of it, really, is just the simplicity with what you can pull the data. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, the, the complexity of data and the volume of it is only yeah. going to get bigger, so tools like that that can make things a lot easier are what we're all looking for. What's the machine learning angle? Because I know that's a big topic here this year. More machine learning, more AI, a lot more solutions on top of the basic mm -hmm. building blocks and the primitives at AWS. You guys fit right into that because developers are doing more. They're either building their own or rolling out solutions. How do you guys see you guys connecting into that with the pipeline? Because you know, data pipelining, people like they like that's it feels like a heavy lift. Mm -hmm. What's the challenge there? Because when people roll their own or try to get in, it's it's, it could be a lot of muck, as they say. <laughs> what's, yeah. the, what's the real pain point that you guys solve? So in terms of you know, AI and machine learning, what Stripe Data Pipeline is going to give you is it gives you a lot of signals around your payments that you can incorporate into your models. We actually have a number of customers that use uh, Stripe radar data, so our fraud product, and they integrate it with their in-house data that they get from other sources, have a really good understanding of fraud within their whole business. So, it's kind of a way to get that data without having to like go through the process of ingesting it. So like, yeah, your, your team doesn't have to think about the ingestion piece, they can just think about you know, building models, enriching the data, getting insights on top. And Adam Selesky called it ETL, the nasty three letter word in my interview with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we're getting to, where data is actually connecting via APIs and pipelines yes. seamlessly into other data. So the data mashup, it feels like we're back into in the old mashup days, now you've got <laughs> data mashing up together. This integration is now a big practice. It's a, becoming an industry standard. What are some of the uh, patterns and matches that you see around how people are integrating their data? Because we all know machine learning works better when there's more data available. Mm -hmm. and people want to connect their data and integrate it without the hassle. What's, the, what's some of the use cases? Adam. Yeah, totally. So, as Brian mentioned, there's a ton of use case for engineering teams and being able to get that data ported over efficiently and correctly, and that's you know something exactly like you touched on that we're seeing nowadays is like simply having access to the data isn't enough. It's all about consolidating it correctly and accurately and effectively so that you can draw the best insights from that. 
Um, so yeah, we're seeing a lot of use cases for teams across companies, including um, a big example is finance teams. Uh, we had one of our largest users actually report that they were able to close their books faster than ever from integrating all of their Stripe revenue data for their business with their, the rest of their data in their data warehouse, um, which was traditionally something that would have taken them days, weeks, you know, having yeah. to do the manual aspect, but they were able to, to simplify that. Savannah, you know, we were talking at the last event, we were at supercomputing where there's more speeds and feeds. As people get more compute power, right. they can do more at the application level with developers. And one of the things we've been noticing, I'd love to get your reaction to is, as you guys have customers, millions of customers, are you seeing customers doing more with Stripe that's not just customers, where they're more of an ecosystem partner of Stripe, as people see that Stripe is not just a... A more comprehensive solution. Yeah, what's going on yeah, with the customer base? I can see the developers embedding yeah. it in, but once you get Stripe, you're like a, you're the plumbing, you're the financial bloodline, if you will, for the, yeah. all the applications. Are your customers turning into partners, ecosystem partners, how do you see that? Yeah, so we definitely, that's what we're hoping to do. We're really hoping to be everything that a user needs um, when they want to run an online business, be able to come in and maybe initially they're just using payments or they're just using billing to set up subscriptions, but down the line, like as they grow, as they might go public, we want to be able to scale with them and be able to offer them all of the products that they need to do so. Um, data pipeline being a really important one for, you know, if you're a smaller company, you might not be needing to leverage all of this big data and making important um, product decisions that, you know, might come down to the very details, but um, as you scale, it's really something that we've seen a lot of our larger users benefit from. Well, and people don't want to have to factor in too many different variables. There's enough yeah. complexity scaling a business, especially if you're headed towards IPO or something like that. Anyway, I love that the Stripe data pipeline is a no-code solution as well, so people can do more mm -hmm. faster. I want to talk about it because it struck me right away on our lineup that we have engineering and product marketing on the stage with us. Now, for those who haven't worked in a very high growth, massive company mm -hmm. before, these teams can have a tiny bit of tension only because both teams want a lot of great things for the end user and their community. Tell me a little bit about the culture at Stripe and what it's like collaborating on the data pipeline. Yeah, I mean, I, I can kick it off. Um, you know, from, from the standpoint, like we're on the same team, like we want to grow Stripe data pipeline, that is the goal. So whatever it takes to kind of get that job done is what we're going to do. And I think that is something that is just really core to all of Stripe is like high collaboration, high trust. You know, this is something where we can all win if we work together. You don't need to, you know, compete with like products for like resourcing or to get your stuff done. It's like, no, what's the, what's right. the, the team goal here, right? Like we're looking for team wins, not, you know, individual wins. Yeah, like and at the end of the day, we have the same goal of connecting yeah. the product and the user in a way that makes sense and delivering the best product to that target user. So it's it's really, it's a great collaboration. And as Brian mentioned, the culture at Stripe really um, aligns with that as well. So you got the engineering teams that get value out of that. You guys are dealing with that, your customer. But the security angle really becomes a big, I think, mm -hmm. catalyst. Because not just engineering, they got to build stuff in. So they're always building. But the security angle is interesting because now you got that data feeding security Definitely. teams. This is becoming very secure, security ops oriented. Yeah, um, you know we are really, really tight partners with our internal security folks. They review everything that we do. We have a really robust security team. But I think, you know, kind of tying back to the Amazon side, like Amazon Redshift is a very secure product, and the way that we share data is really secure. You know, the, the sharing mechanism only works between encrypted clusters, so your data is encrypted at rest, encrypted in transit, and, um, excuse me. <clears throat> You're allowed to breathe. Yeah, yeah, also yeah. swallow. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> the audience, fast. as well as your team <laughs> at Stripe, and all of us here at theCUBE would like your survival first and foremost. <laughs> the knowledge will get to the people. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, where else was I going to go? Yeah, so the other thing, like you kind of mentioned, you know, there are these ETLs out there, um, but they, you know, that, that requires you to trust your data to a third party. So that's another thing here where like, your data is only going from Stripe to your cluster. There's no one in the middle, no one else has seen what you're doing, there's no other security risk. So yeah. security is a big focus and it yeah. kind of runs through the whole process, both on our side and Amazon's side. What's the most important story for Stripe at this event, you guys here? How would you say, how would you say, and if you're on the elevator, what's going on with Stripe, why that now, What's so important 
at reInvent the Stripe? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to plug data pipelines since that's what we focus on. Um, we're here representing the product, which is the easiest way for any user of AWS, a user of Amazon Redshift, and a user of Stripe, um, be able to connect the dots and get their data in the best way possible so that they can draw important business insights from that. Yeah, I think you know I would uh, double what Norse said. Really grow Stripe data pipeline, get it to more customers, get more value for our customers by connecting them with their data and with reporting. I think that's you know my goal here is to talk to folks, kind of understand what they want to see out of their data, and get them onto Stripe data pipeline. And you know, former Mike Mike Clayble, former AWS executive, now over there at Stripe, leading the charge. Mm -hmm. He knows a lot about Amazon here at AWS. The theme tomorrow, Adam Celeste keynote, it's going to be a lot about data. Data integration, data end-to-end -end life cycle, you're starting to see more, we call it data as code, where engineering, infrastructure as code was cloud, we're starting to see a big trend towards data as code, where it's more of an engineering opportunity and solution insights. This data as code is kind of like the next evolution. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, definitely. There is a ton that you can get out of your data if it's in the right place and you can analyze it in the correct ways. Um, you know, you look at Redshift and you can pull data from Redshift into a ton of other products to like, you know, visualize it, to get machine learning insights, and you need the data there to be able to do this. So again, Stripe Data Pipeline is a great way to take your data and integrate it into the larger data picture that you're building within your company. I love that you're supporting businesses of all sizes mm -hmm. and millions of them. Noor and Brian, thank you so much for being here and telling us more about the financial infrastructure of the internet that is Stripe. John Furrier, thanks as always thank for you. your questions yep. and your commentary. And thank you to all of you for tuning in to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent live here from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Savannah Peterson and we look forward to seeing you all week. <laughs>